We're on your side tonight, continuing our conversation about race. For almost 95 years, the Junior League of Charlotte has trained women to be leaders in the community and encouraged them to help make an impact through phil philanthropic endeavors. It is one of almost 300 chapters across the country with the same goal of creating leaders and propelling them into cities to make real change. Today, the league in Charlotte is made up of a diverse group of women, but it has not always been that way. WBTV's Caroline Hicks spoke with Charlita Hatch, the league's current president and the fifth black woman to serve in that role in Charlotte. She joins us now live. Caroline, how is what's happening right now impacting her approach as president? Well, Alex, Charlita Hatch has been a member of the Junior League for the past 13 years before coming before becoming president. She knew she would face challenges, but nothing could have prepared her for what 2020 has thrown her way. She says it pushes her even more to fight for inclusion in the league and in the city of Charlotte. It's a privilege and it is a big responsibility feeling like you are going through some of the turmoil as a mother of a black son uh, and, and married to a black husband and seeing what's happening in our community. But also knowing that I have the, the Junior League of Charlotte and our organization where I know I can be a part of the, the change and the solution. Charlita Hatch often reminds members how far the league has come. So I reflect back into the the 1980s when the first black member was uh, admitted into the junior league and at that time I believe they had to have eight sponsors to be a part of the organization as you think about just the barriers of getting eight women to sponsor you at all um, regardless of race but particularly hard for people of color now we have transformed to not only requiring that members have one sponsor but also if you don't have a sponsor we will match you with a sponsor and so as we think about recruiting we are always looking to eliminate those different barriers that members may have. She follows the footsteps of women like Tony Freeman, who became the first black president in Charlotte in 2002. I've always felt as a black female that people maybe just didn't care. I've now realized that people just didn't know. And I really do believe that so many people didn't realize the different experiences and challenges that black people in this country still faced. And that has humbled me and, and really taught me um, that the way that I want to be treated where people don't assume things about me that I also have to do that myself. How important do you think it is for women of all colors of all backgrounds in the junior league that they are discussing what is happening across our country right now? I think that the women of color can certainly have the conversation but having our non women of color participate in those conversations serve as allies and kind of charging the way to make sure that it's equal and it's just and it's safe and that the woman of color feels like they belong and set in that tone. I think that's important and I think that's work we do here in the Junior League and the Junior League women can certainly model the way for other um, citizens of Charlotte as well. She says they also have to match words with action, pushing for equality while volunteering in the community. The Junior League is focused on school readiness for kids from birth to fifth grades and the zip codes prioritized by Mecklenburg County. It is our way of helping with the economic mobility challenges that we have within our city with Charlotte being 50 out of 50 and from a poverty perspective. And so we do train our members on different things on when you show up, how do you volunteer, what do you wear, what do you not wear, what are some of the unconscious biases that you may have, how do you make sure that the people that you're serving feel like they are equal to you. What do you think is the biggest impact that the league can have in terms of moving race relations forward in Charlotte? I think the world of women. I am just as a woman and just seeing all the things that women can do. The fact that in Charlotte you have 1600 trained community leaders the work that we can do internally to have those conversations to challenge our 1600 women to go out and have a conversation fire those people up to have a conversation and in those conversations do call to actions and small changes I believe that the breadth of the junior league can make a huge impact not just through our service in the community but also with our service through ourselves how far do you think we still have to go in terms of the league and as a country we know that 
there has been systematic racism in place since slavery, you know, and I don't think that we should think about ever getting to the destination, but really thinking about the journey. I think that we will always need to work at this, like we work at many other things, and I'm not sure that we'll ever be done. But as we look at the progress and celebrate the small wins, and we start to bring in our children and our children's children, we can look back and one, say we were a part of that progress, and two, they will continue to progress that forward. Very inspiring to hear her talk. Our Caroline Hicks joins us now live again. Caroline, like every organization on top of all this, the league is also facing challenges because of the coronavirus pandemic. Did she talk about how she is reaching members of the league right now when she can't be face to face with them? Well, absolutely. They're not having their meetings in person quite yet. The building is still closed. So like many organizations, they're doing everything virtually. Right now, they're offering a 21 day equity challenge that's happening online. They're also, of course, using their social media platforms to make sure that they're giving encouragement to all of their members. They said they're also taking this time to really plan for the day that they are able to all get back together in a room. Alex, I noticed she really did sound hopeful that the league can make a difference here in the Queen City. Where does that confidence come from, Caroline? Well, she said you would be hard pressed to find something in the city of Charlotte involving women or children that the Junior League did not have something to do with. And she kind of liked to use that same model when it comes to race and really push members to get involved in this conversation and hopefully make a long term change. Our Caroline Hicks reporting live for us tonight on On Your Side tonight, bringing us excellent conversations about what is a really tough topic to talk about these days. Caroline, thank you for your reporting. Coming up next.